This is the Evolve Your Wedding Business Podcast, episode number 48. In a world where wedding professionals are struggling to market and grow their businesses, one podcast brings together top experts and actionable strategies to help you build the wedding business of your dreams. This is the Evolve Your Wedding Business Podcast. Here is your host, Heidi Thompson. Hey there, and welcome to the podcast. I'm your host, Heidi Thompson, and I have got a fantastic interview for you today. So if you ever find yourself thinking there aren't enough hours in the day and that you're just busy, 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 and maybe you're busy and you don't feel like you're getting a lot done, you are going to love this. Today's interview is with Angela Prophet, who is a wedding planner as well as a productivity coach. And we had a really great conversation about productivity, making the most of your time, as well as how she built a team. Make sure you head over to the show notes page, which will be at evolveyourweddingbusiness.com slash 48, because there are a lot of tools we're talking about today. All right, let's get to it. Today, I am joined by Angela Prophet, who is a celebrity wedding planner, entrepreneur, and productivity coach with more than a decade of experience in the wedding and event industry. She is the owner and lead designer for Vivid Experiences, which is a full service event and wedding planning company. And Angela's known for implementing technology to help people operate a paperless organization and work more productively. So I am really excited to have Angela here today to talk about how you can become more productive in your business. So thank you for joining me, Angela. Thank you for having me. So you've been doing this for a while, and I'm curious in your experience, what the biggest productivity issues you see wedding professionals struggling with are? Well, we are very creative people Mm -hmm. and we love our pen and paper. (laughs) Um, Not only to draw ideas and sketches, which is great, but to make to-do lists. We have millions of details to manage for each and every event that we plan. And if you don't have an effective way to manage those details, it can be a complete mess behind the scenes. (laughs) (laughs) So I think the biggest challenge is, um, you know, it's a very personal experience. It's a very emotional experience for our clients. Getting married is one of the biggest days of their life. And it's really a challenge to delegate and to share tasks with team members and other people to get to help you to manage all of these details. So me being one of them, struggling in the beginning when I first started, but as I grew and as I started to book more and more events, I quickly learned through a business coach who was awesome that you've got to learn to trust other people. You have to learn to delegate. You have to learn to share your task with others so that you can get some sleep some nights. So that's one of the challenges because as the owner, you want to own the event. You want to be accountable and you want to do a great job for your client or your bride. And so sharing the task is definitely one of the struggles that we all face, I feel like, as owners. (laughs) Definitely. So I'm curious, in your own experience then, how did you kind of get out of that mindset that you had to do everything yourself? And then how did you start to make that transition? Well, I had a lot of really good people around me who had a lot more experience and who were guiding me and encouraging me to hire people and grow my business. And so the first step that I took was started a, an official intern program. And so i went to a couple of colleges locally and put my name on a list. And before I knew it, I was getting emails every week. And I was thinking, why do these people want to follow me and learn what I do? Um, it's so busy. But 
I was able to get some awesome interns from some of the local colleges and they do it for school credit. And so I was not, I was really lucky because I didn't, I was not expected to pay them because instead of them going to class for their semester, they were in the field with me learning to see if they wanted to do what I did for a future. And so basically they were helping me. And after, at the end of their internship, I thought, oh my gosh, I don't want to do without these people or without help because it was such a relief to be able to have someone to help me. And so that's when I decided, okay, I'm going to offer one of them a full-time position and I can pay them. And I just, I just did it. I just jumped. I didn't really have a plan or an official budget. I just decided, okay, I'm going to hire this person. And then one thing led to another and I kept booking more events. And in June, which June is very, very busy for our industry where I live. And I had someone call me and ask me for the same date, but I thought I'm already booked, but I don't want to say no because I really want to help this family. And so I told them I'm booked on your day, but I can still plan your event. I can still help with your design, educate you with your budget, do a timeline for all of the vendors, but I just can't personally be there. So if it's okay, I'll have my sister or some of the girls that have interned and trained with me that I'm comfortable with. And they were fine with it, which actually shocked me. And so then I pulled some other people that I knew that would do a great job that had been training with me and they were able to lead that event and they did a great job. And then it just kept happening over and over where I had to tell people, hey, I'm booked, but it's really not about me. It's about the team of professionals that you choose to hire and you trust me to put together. And that's one of the, another misconception of planners. Girls think, oh, we're your friend. We hang out with you. We get our nails done and our hair done, but it's not like that at all. And in my company, I am the eyes and ears and making sure that the girls are getting everything that they expected and making sure that We're meeting their expectations, kind of like the mommy of the group uh, behind the scenes. (laughs) And so now, you know, fast forward 13 years, I have a large team that has interned and trained and worked with me for so many years that I don't have to be at every event because there's other girls in the company that can go out and execute just like I can because they've been around me for so long. They know what I would do. So when something bad happens, which I don't, I don't call anything bad, but if something happens where it wasn't planned or it's not happening the way that it was planned, they know to stay calm. They know how to communicate. They know how to move forward in a positive manner and fix the situation. So I'm really lucky. I have been very lucky to find the right people for the right positions and that it didn't, it doesn't come by chance. Like I use a psychological methodology that I learned when I worked in healthcare. And I used that methodology to evaluate people's personalities and how their brain is wired to make sure that I'm positioning them in the correct area of for each and every event. I think that's something that's really important that people may overlook if they're hiring or outsourcing or taking on, you know, a contractor as an assistant is that Finding that personality match, being able to click with your team, I personally find very important. Mm -hmm. It is the most important thing, in my opinion. And a lot of my friends that are entrepreneurs, before we started down this pathway of trying to figure out what are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? How can we make this better? They kept asking me, how is everyone around you so happy? (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, guys, I use this methodology. It's a personality test. And I just try to place people, you know, appropriately. And most entrepreneurs, I feel like in the beginning, they hire people like them because they like them because Mm -hmm. you, you have to be around these people. But through experience, I've learned I like to hire people that are not like me, who like to do things that I don't like to do or I don't want to do or I prefer not to do. So everybody has their own task. We all have different jobs in the company and we all enjoy what we're doing so that we're not forced. And in the beginning, when I first started my company, 
you know, obviously, like most people, you're forced to do everything and you figure out like, oh, wow, I wish I could hire someone to do that because I really don't enjoy that. Like numbers and accounting, I am I can do it, but I really prefer not to. <laughs> so, you know, I made a priority list and finding people that enjoy those things. And so I have found that hiring people that are not like me is a better approach so that it makes up the company as a whole and you're not missing something and no one is miserable in doing something that they don't want to do. That makes a lot of sense. Um, Do you remember what some of those first things were that you delegated when maybe you were still kind of feeling like, okay, I'm going to push myself to do this. I'm not a hundred percent comfortable with it, but we'll give it a try. Oh, well, absolutely. The, like I said, the first thing was the accounting piece. And I feel like the the laws change so frequently and with, with taxes and so forth. And I did not go to school for business. I went to school to be in psychology. And I took a um, class through an entrepreneur organization. I had a mentor through a group called SCORE. I, I saw, Again, I found people that knew what they were doing and and they all advise me, well, the first step, Angela, is getting an accountant to make sure that your business is run appropriately. So that was the first thing that I did. And the second thing that I did was really implementing a system as I started to hire people to delegate and make sure that we all had our own to-do list and we all had our deadlines. And one thing that I learned about myself is I actually do not enjoy doing a to-do list. I can make them like crazy. But when it comes to actually following up and following a list, um, this, it's very boring to me. I'm much more creative and alive, and I want to be out talking to people and traveling to different cities, planning different events every day. I thrive off of that. That's what energizes me, where some of the girls in my company, they enjoy working alone at home or just alone in the office where they can focus and do a to-do list and get 57 things done in a day. And gosh, they feel so good at the end of the day. Um, And so that's the second thing that I did. I found somebody whose personality was very focused and very, we call it type A, um, and who enjoyed that so that they could help me follow up and follow through and provide really good customer service to my clients. I can do it, but I'd much rather be out creating an event or creating an idea for someone rather than doing a list. (laughs) Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, there are things that, yeah, I can do, but I know I don't like to do them and I probably shouldn't be doing them. I could be focusing on more important things. Mm -hmm. And it's important to realize that that is not what is expected of you. You're you're putting that on yourself, but you shouldn't expect yourself to do everything. It's okay to find someone whose genius zone is in numbers and have them handle that part of it. Absolutely. Give yourself permission to breathe. Yes. So what do people need to do in order to really become more productive? I hear a lot. Um, I don't have time or I feel like I have a million things going on and it's just overwhelming. What are some things that we can do to become more productive or more like a planner? Yeah. Well, the first step is, um, planning, obviously, (laughs) which entrepreneurs, um, We love to just jump around to the next best thing and we're opportunists. And but focusing is so important because you'll never finish anything. Mm -hmm. And so while I hate saying this, but sitting down with the calendar and and putting things on your calendar and having a schedule and staying focused is so important. And for me personally, my calendar, it looks like a Christmas tree because there's so many different colors. And, and, and for me, the colors are in priority. So for example, everything in red, those are meetings. Those are things that have to happen. I have to show up. I have to be there. There's things in green, meaning I'll block a four hour time block on my calendar that 
where I have to build a floor plan. I have to communicate with all the vendors what a client wants. Um, I have to do some price shopping online to pull together a budget. And when I'm working with numbers and I'm trying to find certain things for my clients and if I have distractions going on, like the television in the background or the dog barking or the phone's ringing or texting or I have all these notifications coming in on my computer, it's just pure distraction. And so I have learned that I shut out all distractions and when I, when there's a time block on my schedule to get something done, even though I'm sitting by myself, I'm focused and I'm working and I'm working on numbers and I cannot have any distractions. So I've learned that I'm much more productive and I actually get things done when it is on my calendar. And then there's those big tasks and things that we all want to do, such as finish a book or uh, do a promotional video. Because at the end of every year, all the vendors know we put together a recap of all the events that we did together that year. And then I like to send it out as a thank you for thank you so much for working so hard. And while it's a priority, it's not a priority for my clients. So that's something that goes in blue on my calendar to say, hey, you need to remember this project and get it done. But it's not as big of a priority as what's in red and what's in green. And so just by breaking down the priorities through something so simple as color coding my calendar is very effective for me personally. (laughs) I do the same thing, you but do? on Google Calendar. It's mm-hmm. like a crazy colorful, not mess, because it's not a mess. I right. guess to someone who doesn't know what I mean by all of these colors and blocks, it could look like a mess. But that way, you know what you're focusing on tomorrow. You Correct. don't have to go through that weird phase in the morning, the, oh, what am I supposed to be doing right now? And dive right in. Yeah, because sometimes... You know, when you're, if you have a hundred events that you're planning for that year, you know, it's like, where do I start? Yeah. And so prioritizing is the number one priority for us in the company. It's like, what do we have this weekend? And there's one girl in my company that that's her job. She is in charge of making sure that every vendor has been communicated with, every linen, every thing has been ordered for that client. She's tracking things to make sure that the shipping is on time. You know, there's so many little things in the background, but I don't have to worry about that because I can trust her. She's got it. She knows her role. She knows her job. And she makes sure that things show up on time on Friday for the events on Saturdays. <laughs> oh, I bet that's such a nice feeling, just knowing that it's happening and you're not doing it. Yes, it's a great feeling. I'm curious, how do you plan, I guess, two questions. One, how far are you planning things out when you put your plans together on your calendar? And how are you kind of delineating between client work time and actually work on your business time? Sure. Well, it varies in terms of when clients call. We have some clients that uh, have already booked us for 2016. So... I I still go ahead and I have a full day of design meeting with them and then another full day of building the floor plan and getting the quotes together because they are, they're planners. They want to plan ahead. They're, they're in school or they're doing a rotation in the hospital or they're in law school and they are planning ahead so they don't have to stress for their wedding. And then we have other clients that call us and they want to get married in two months and they think nothing of it. They're like, can I get a dress and some invitations out? Like we don't want a long engagement. So obviously something like that that comes in that's in two months, we have to work a lot faster. But the difference is that someone that books us 15 months in advance, they have time to make decisions. They have time to change their mind. They have time to not rush into all of these huge decisions where when you give yourself really under five months, you don't really have a lot of decision time. So there's not a lot of back and forth with those clients. It's like, this is your opportunity. These are your options. And we need to make a decision now because things have to be ordered. So it's the same process. It's just a lot quicker for people when when they don't plan as far in advance. And 
What was the other question again? <laughs> oh, how do you separate time to work oh, on yeah. your clients and in your business? Well, again, like I block time on my schedule. So in a perfect world, we try to do meetings two days a week. Um, you know, I'll go from eight o'clock in the morning to eight o'clock at night all day, just meeting with clients. And then I try to have two office days where I'm at my desk and working on priorities. And, we, you know, we often do have events on the weekends. But again, I don't always have to be there. So I might go to an event. And while everything is, I have, I have a great team running the event, I'm in the background working on the business or working on a book or working on something. I'm there supervising, making sure everything is going great in the background. And if something comes up, hey, I'm right there to help them fix it. But over the past year, I've really tried to remove myself from that situation so that I can be more of an owner and grow our company into something different where... I can teach other planners and other businesses to go paperless and how to be more productive. And there's two reasons that came about because, one, I started to do destination weddings and travel. And as I work with new vendors, you know, every time you go to a different location, you're working with a new venue and new vendors. And I have to do my research and make sure that I'm hiring people that are going to be able to do what we're asking them to do. And the, the, some of the, I work with some of the most incredible people in the industry, but in the background, their businesses, they're a mess. And it's not that they mean for them to be. It's just that they're creative and they don't know, hey, things can be so much better if you hire a business manager and you hire somebody that's not like you to run things in the background. Things can be so much more easy. So I've really started to feel this calling of, gosh, Angela, you need to get out there and help other businesses and other planners and other designers and just people in the industry to get more organized in the background. And unfortunately, as human beings, we do not like change. Mm-hmm. And until something like a tragedy happens, it's like, well, we're making money. Why change? Well, to be proactive and to make sure that you are making sure that your information is safe, people don't really want to change. But Nashville had a tragedy several years ago, and the, the town was completely flooded. Um, I mean, all the way to the street that I grew up on as a little girl, the stop sign, you couldn't see wow. the stop sign almost. It was completely underwater, and um, it was, a, it was a, a terrible tragedy for this city. However, on the flip side... For me, a lot of the vendors and entrepreneurs in town that knew me and knew that I was really big on backing up your information and being paperless, then they came to me and said, okay, can you help us? And so one Sunday, because we're all busy, I mean, we we found a Sunday that worked for all, all of us and we got together and I just taught them what I know and how we do things and how I delegate and how I've been growing the team and how we operate paperless. And they started to implement that because out of fear, because they did not want to ever be stuck in the situation that, that, that had just happened to them with the flood. So a lot of them, they lost their cars, their, their houses flooded, their businesses flooded, their warehouses flooded. And when you don't live in a floodplain, you don't think to have flood insurance when you don't have insurance, you lose everything. And it's like starting over your, your life and your business. So, but a tragedy for them turned into a business for me and helping others and teaching them how to back up their life. Because most, for most of us, if we own a business, you know, our businesses, that's very much part of our life and, our, and how we live. So it was, it was devastating, but it actually turned into a positive thing for me personally to be able to go out there and help others and, and preach to them to be proactive and don't have the attitude of, oh, this will never happen to me because you never know. Yeah, I think it's really important to have that that proactive and that growth mindset. Like, okay, sure, maybe it's not the end of the world that I don't have like nice, clear system set up in my business. But would it make my life easier and allow me to do things I can't do now? Yeah, Yeah, probably. (laughs) So why not? Definitely. 
I'm curious, what are some of the systems in your business that are kind of really the most important? Yeah. Well, for the the first thing, again, going back to a to-do list, we use an app called Wonderlist. And we do have a, a robust software that keeps up and manages so m- many of our details, but it's not a one-click app on your phone that's right. super easy to get into. And so we use multiple apps and multiple software systems to keep things organized. And with Wonderlist, it's literally one click on my phone and I click on who's ever list I need to go to and I just add things to people's list of things that need to be done and then I associate a due date with it. And the great thing is some of my team members, I, I go a month and I don't see them or talk to them because it's not by choice. It's just because we're super busy. But I know that things are getting done and I don't have to call them or text them or distract them and say, hey, did you order that linen for so-and-so for the tasting next week? Or, hey, did you do this or did you do that? Because I can just put it on wonder list as things come into my head and, and associate the due date with it. And then if I need to know, like, was that done? I just go to our list and see that it's checked off. So it creates less distraction, even when we're in the office together, which doesn't happen too often. But when we're all together sitting there working on a project, I'm really big on no distractions. So even if one of the girls is sitting behind me, I will not stop and ask them, hey, did you do this? I'll, I'll put it on our wonder list. And I think that is something that has really made us more productive. A lot of the girls do work from home. Not everybody can work from home, though. Some types of people need the structure, and and I've learned that the hard way in trying to give a little bit more leeway to some of the girls um, that work with us, and they they don't do well at home. They need structure. They need to go to an office from 9 to 5, and with this industry, it is not like that at all. It's not a 9 to 5 gig, so... You know, we weeded some people out, not because they weren't great people. They just weren't a good fit for for the role and for the job. So you have to be a a go-getter, a self-starter to be able to really work from home and be productive. And so Wonderless is one way. And another way that we've really, really become, become more productive is by sharing the information with the clients Um, For example, I would have clients, I mean, we get hundreds of emails a day with questions. And most brides have the same types of questions. So when Dropbox came out and Google Drive, I thought, you know, let's try this. Let's try to share Dropbox with each client, put all their quotes in there. We will name them appropriately. So when a vendor sends me a quote and it's got a weird file name to it, we'll rename it and say, Baker quote, catering quote, rental quote, linen quote, you know, and so forth. So we started to develop a process and have a method to the madness. And I started to share the Dropbox folders with my clients and we started to really build off of that. And then the timeline and the budget, which are two things that we're constantly editing, we put those on Google Drive and then again, shared them with the client. And just by doing those two things and and all of our stuff was backed up in Google Drive and Dropbox, it reduced our emails by hundreds. And it started to really make a difference. And But again, it, it takes time. And I had to I educate my clients now when they're, it, when they're interviewing me. And I say, we're a paperless company. Everything is backed up through Dropbox and Google Drive. And I even have time capsule and hard drives and carbonite. I'm a little psycho when it comes to backing things up because I've I've lost everything in college and I never wanted to feel that way again. And it's a, it's a real secure feeling for clients and brads who go interview other planners, which I encourage them to do because I'm not for everybody. I, I really sell a security blanket as some of my vendors tell me, they're like, you make your clients feel so secure that it's not a one woman show that you have a team of people and they love that. They love, I want them to get credit too. I want them to know it's not about me. Yes, I'm driving the communication and the ideas and the information, but it's a team effort. 
And so now we even share Dropboxes with all of our vendors that we work with on a regular basis. And so now we have a really good system down. So we're not receiving hundreds of emails where we have taught brides and, and vendors to access their own information and they can get in and look at it anytime. And some brides say, oh my gosh, what if I mess something up? And I tell them, don't worry, this is your document. This is a template, but it's customized completely for your event. I can always pull up anything and restore anything that, that you mess up. In fact, last week we had one of our brides that put 240 addresses in her Excel sheet in Google Drive. And her mother also has access. And she called my assistant crying. And she said, I went in and all these addresses, there's like 40 of them, but I knew I put like 200 in. And so my assistant went in and, and saw, oh, well, your mother logged in at such and such time yesterday and deleted 200 of them. Obviously, it was an accident. She said, no big deal. We can restore it. It's, it's not the end of the world. That's the beauty of the application. And the bride just thought that, you know, she saved her life because that took her two full days to put in the addresses on Google Drive. And that's one of the most important things is I have to have a guest list for my clients to know where do the invitations go and how many people do I build a budget off of. And it's very time consuming getting together addresses and I have a lot of families, I will ask them, where's your guest list? And the, I have one mom saying, well, it's on notebook paper. And then I have another mom saying, well, I have like 10 post-it notes around my computer. And then I, the bride will say, well, I have an Excel sheet on my computer. And I, I'll tell them all, well, if your notebook's in your purse and your purse was stolen or your computer crashed and you don't have that Excel sheet backed up or you open the window and the wind was blowing and your post-it notes went everywhere. So this is not a safe way to have your guest list. And I know I sound very extreme, but those things have happened. So I educate them and encourage them to put all of their information in one place, all on Google Drive. They can all access it from their computer, their phones, their iPads, and actually take their devices and put Dropbox and Google Drive on their computer because they're free. And, and I teach them how to use it. And the best feeling is, again, knowing that that information is backed up. But what's really rewarding for me is, you know, a month will go by and my clients will come back in and meet with me. And they'll say, I've got my whole office set up on Dropbox. We're, we're, go, we're throwing away the Manila folders for our clients. And we're creating Dropbox folders for each of our clients. And then, and then we're sharing it with them. And they're not in my industry whatsoever. But anybody can use these applications to become more productive. Even soccer moms, my sister has four kids and they're all in some type of activity. And so every week she's going from dance to soccer to basketball and even setting her up with a calendar and with a shared Google Drive document so, so all the moms could carpool together. You know, it changed their life. It made them much more productive and it created more time for them to actually watch their kids play their sports and do their dance instead of being on their phones, texting each other, trying to figure out who was going to be the next carpooler. Um, so that's why I'm really passionate about trying to get out there to all industries, not just weddings and events, because I feel like being productive and having these tools can really help anybody. <laughs> Definitely. And I absolutely love Google Drive. I do everything in Google Drive. And I love the fact that a free application can both make your life easier and make you more productive because everything's in one place. Yes. No more chasing stuff around. I love it. And the Dropbox folder idea is a really good idea too. I like that. And then, you know, you don't have people emailing you hey, did you get that quote? Um, I thought we talked about it, but I, now I don't remember. Where did I save it? Did I delete it? All in one place. That's such a good way to do it. Yeah, and then another big, big, um, and, and just it's, it's a challenge for, for our industry is pictures and video because we manage, gosh, if I have 10 events in a month, you know, I have... 4,000 pictures associated. So it's 40,000 pictures that, um, that are coming in in a month. And 
So I, another major question that I get specifically from people in our industry, but also moms that take a lot of pictures on their phone with their, of their kids. And they're like, my phone's full. It won't let me update. How can I do this? And so Smug Mug is, a, is another app that a lot of photographers use, use, and they have a great system where you can organize all of your files. And the thing that I love is there's no limit to your storage space. So Dropbox does have a limit of storage space, which once you've met that limit, you can always purchase more. Or if you continue to share Dropbox with others, every time someone joins, you get 250 megabytes for free every single time. So now I've, I don't think I'll ever pay for Dropbox because I've invited (laughs) so many clients. I was just going to say, I bet you're one of those people who are like racking up the Dropbox credit. (laughs) Oh yeah. I don't think I'll ever pay for it. And you know, which is great, but Smug Mug, um, well Dropbox, it, depending on how much space you have. And if you do back up your photos that way, it can reduce the size of your photos and it can clog up your Dropbox very quickly because you do have a storage limit. But Smug Mug, you don't have a storage limit. It does not reduce the size of your pictures. And and just so people understand, you've got web resolution pictures, which are fairly small and they don't take up a lot of space because they're for, for the web. But then if you want to print something or like a beautiful book or a portfolio or blow up a big canvas picture, which a lot of my clients do that, you really have to have a high resolution picture so it's not all pixelated. And if you have a small file that you're blowing up, it's not going to look very good. So I really like Smug Mug because... It acts as our online iCloud resource to store all of our photos and all of our video and then get them off our computers. And they're backed up, and then it's not taking up space on the computer. And it's something great that I can send to my clients, like just a link that says, here's our our Smug Mug account. You can see all the weddings that we've done at various venues because we have it organized by venue, and then we have it organized you know, by state and country and island, you know, for destination weddings. And people sit on it for hours and just look at pictures and watch video. And I know that because I look at Google Analytics, which is a free service, another free service by Google. And a lot of business owners don't know where their traffic is coming from and how to assess, do I put pictures on my website or do I put video on my website Um, you can really pay attention to your analytics. We look at them weekly. I have a marketing director that evaluates everything and looks and says, you know, this video did great. Everyone watched it from beginning to end. And then this other video, they, we had a drop off of around 40 people at two minutes and 43 seconds. So what, what's changing? And so you can really go back and evaluate who you're marketing to and why they're dropping off. And I, so I love Google Analytics. It's another great feature um, to know that if you're being effective in sharing your pictures and your, your videos. Me too. And Smugbug sounds awesome because photos and videos take up a lot of space. They do. And I can only imagine if you have like 40,000 coming in a month, you have to put them somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, before Smug Mug, I, again, you know, use hard drives and Carbonite, which is a cloud-based system. It does run your battery down a little bit quicker on your laptop, but having the secure safety of knowing that everything is being backed up. So now with the advancements of technology, all of everyone in the office, that ha- we all, they all have to have an Apple laptop and Apple products because we're just not productive if, if they don't. But pretty much nothing lives on our computer, which is a great feeling. Everything that we do in, is a third, through a third-party application that's being backed up either through Dropbox or the cloud. And I try to teach my coworkers and, and students that are new at all this, you know, trying to get into the industry, your computer will run much faster and the, expectance, the life expectancy will go a lot further with your space if you train yourself to use the cloud so that you're not having large files on your computer. And if something happens to your computer, oh, well, go buy a new one because you can go to any computer, go to Dropbox, Google Drive, or any of these sites and pull up your information and it's all safe. (laughs) 
It's such a good fit. I've had a hard drive die on me before. Uh, I, I totally know how that is. And it's like, uh, oh, okay, bye to all of that. Yeah, it's a it's a very, very sick feeling. Um, I've had someone spill, a client spilt coffee on, uh, they put it up by the TV and it, it someone knocked it over and it went all over our hard drive. It didn't ruin it, but I, I did not have a panic moment because I knew that Every that was my secondary backup. That <laughs> you know, having um, having Carbonite and then having Dropbox and having Google Drive is a, ve- a very good feeling. I sleep very well at night, laying my head down, knowing that everything is backed up, and it's it's a really really good feeling. And that not only the security aspect, but it's making you more productive. It's allowing you to give your clients access to things that perhaps your competitors aren't doing and that's giving you an edge. Yeah. Well, it's funny because some planners, they're like, why are you doing that? Why are you having these classes, like teaching other people to do what you do? And, you know, I I tell them, I don't know about you, but when I'm 60 years old, I'm not going to be running around planning a hundred events. I plan to be living on my island like (laughs) with a college, like teaching people how to do what I used to do. Um, cause th- there's really not a lot of good schools out there that, um, teach people to do what we do. And there's, there are some software programs and some models and some schools, but it's still developing and having mentors and having guidance is one of the most important things because we learn by experience. You cannot read one book and learn how to run a business and how to, be a creative person and how to have good people skills. It just, it doesn't happen that way. And so I try to share my experiences with other people and especially the younger generation coming up that, Hey, this is fun and it's rewarding and I wouldn't want to be doing anything else, but it is not easy. Just like nothing's easy um, in life and you have to work hard for it and you have to want it. You have to be determined to make other people happy. I love that you are sharing this because it's so easy to just be like, no, mine, I'm not going to share this with anybody. But like you said, this can benefit people long after you're gone from this world. Oh, yeah. And it's definitely something more people need because there are so many people struggling, like you said, you know, behind the scenes, it's a total mess. Mm-hmm. And that's just stressful, and it doesn't feel good, and it doesn't make you happy. It's just bad all around. Yeah, it sometimes it just it breaks my heart because I'll be in a class, and and some of the people I, again they're so creative, but they have zero process and zero business sense, and it's not that they don't want to; they just don't know how, and at the end of some of my classes, you know, I have people that come up to me and they're like, wow, I really thought that I was good with my computer and my phone, but I didn't know what I didn't know. Mm -hmm. But once you know, and someone shares information with you, then you can move forward and grow and continue to learn. I learn new things every day. I love it when people tell me about new apps and new websites, new applications, and some of them are great. Some of them I question their backup ability. Um, And it's funny because some of the software companies that I talk to, that's my first question is how are you backing up the data that you were storing for people that you're selling this software to? And some of them, it's, it's alarming uh, of how, what their plan is. And, you know, I feel like I'm kind of mothering them and saying, well, if, if it were me, just from my experience, you might want to look into a different way because, I mean, I'm extreme. I worked in a mental hospital and I had CEOs that were suicidal because of this very situation where they their stuff was hacked into or their, um, their offices burnt down and they lost everything and they didn't have anything backed up for their clients. And they were at a point in their life where they felt like they could not start over. But it's never too late. It's never too late to implement change. It's never too late to start day by day making small goals, which can become big goals. And you just don't be afraid to make 
changes in technology. People are so intimidated by it. And it's it doesn't have to be intimidating. I try to make it fun. And most people that come to my class, they leave a little overwhelmed, but they're excited because they have new tools that can help them be more productive in their business. That's funny. That reminds me, my mom actually just got a laptop for the first uh-huh. time a little while ago. And she was so just afraid. And, and I asked her, I was like, what's going on? She's like, I'm afraid I'm going to break something. <laughs> I was like, I think the days of you being able to break something, unless you physically rip the laptop open and start pulling pieces out, are gone. They're behind us. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, definitely don't be afraid to try new things. Yeah. And then also, too, you know, for business owners, I there's so many, again, free applications. Like over the past two years, every year we look at, you know, I was paying for a conference call line and a fax line and a third party voicemail service. And, you know, all these things, it's like $10 here, $10 there, $10 there. And you blink your eyes and you're like, wow, I'm paying $1,000 in fees. <laughs> And some of the things we weren't even using or we don't use them that much or we weren't really happy with the customer service. And so I started to search for other ways. Like, is there a free way? Is there a better way? And one tool that we use is free conference call. Um, It's an app that we get our own conference call number and we have clients and vendors just because we do so many destination events now that call into the number and we're able to get things planned and we're able to stay on track with the agenda because each time the next person calls into the conference call number, it dings. And then we wrap up the call with that, that vendor we were talking to and, and move on to something else. And there's a, there's a fax app that's free. There's UMail that we now use for our voicemail. So it it um, if you call my phone, it addresses you by first name. And a lot of these apps, they do have a free version and they also have a paid version, which does advance things. Like, for example, voicemails can be dictated so that you can read them. You know, that's a, obviously a paid service. And uh, we also use Grasshopper, which is another voicemail service that you can dial into different extensions. And then it pushes the voicemail to the appropriate person that needs to respond to that question or to that person. So I, I encourage people, you know, look, don't be afraid, like go on your computer, your phone. I kind of do it the first of every month to see what's new. Um, I'm kind of an app fiend and, and we do make a lot of changes in the office sometimes just to see if something will work better. And I, I love change. If it's going to make us better and faster and more productive, then, you know, I'm totally open to it, but not everyone's like that. Um, the, the Dropbox and Google Drive, those two have still stuck for years, but there are so many other applications out there. When I feel like I'm not being productive, for example, we have a blog and if a question comes in from a client, and again, they, they usually have some of the same similar questions, I encourage them to go to the blog and type in the question. And if an answer isn't there, then email us. And then I'll tell the girls in the office, if there's not an answer to this question, we need to blog about it. And we need to make sure that the blog is being used for content management, for resources, for people that have these questions. And then we have an online community that we're creating for vendors where they can be members, monthly members, and go on and ask questions, you know, behind the scenes from vendor to vendor. So if they ha- are having an issue with a client or a bride or they just need guidance because they're not sure how to handle it or how to communicate with, with their client, um, they can ask those questions too. And so we're starting to act as a resource center and just a hub of information for clients and vendors so that kind of like a therapist, which is what I went to school for, (laughs) but, um, you know, making sure that people know like, Hey, there is an outlet, there is help. Don't get frustrated. Don't, you know, crawl up in your bed and just cry for a day because we're here to help and we're here to make it better. And so using your blog as a resource center for information 
only helps other people know that, hey, you're well credited and at what you do and and validates all the years of experience that that we've had. And by sharing those experiences, it helps other people. So that's another really good resource too um, that I feel helps you know yeah. clients and vendors. And it's gonna help you attract clients too. So mm-hmm. there is no bad side to that. Definitely. Well, if you're, you know, we, I I choose the content very carefully. Mm. I, I'm a very, I hate politics and I want everybody (laughs) to be happy and I want everybody to get along. That's why sometimes email just does not work for me because if someone asks me a very specific question, I don't ever want to come across as being negative or I don't want them to misread it. So for me, sometimes it's just better to say, hey, let's schedule a time to chat for 15 minutes because I'm a very honest, blunt person. And I'm going to tell you that th- this person may not be the best person for you to hire, but you could hire, you know, here's some other people that you could look at. Now, I might not tell them why, but if I had a, ne- a negative experience with someone and they didn't try to recoup the relationship, then obviously it's not it's not in my best benefit to try to promote someone, but there's some things like that, that I'm not going to put in an email because you don't know what they're going to do with it. (laughs) Yeah. You never know. So Angela, as we wrap up here, I'm curious what you would tell someone who today is feeling frazzled and overwhelmed and like they're scrambling and things are still falling through the cracks. What steps can they take? Well, I would say the first thing is to stop and take the time a day or even half a day, even if it's a Sunday, to e- explore what's out there and, and what could help you, what could better help you. So, for example, I plug my, my laptop into a large computer screen, and it's just a monitor at our, my home office. And with the new Apple systems, you I can hit F3 and I can have 30 screens, 30 desktops. But when I unplug my computer from my big screen, the windows go everywhere. And it, it drove me crazy. And I would spend an hour trying to reorganize my screens. So I Googled and went on YouTube. Is there an app that can organize my screen when I unplug it from a TV or a monitor? I'm not kidding. And this app popped up that said, yes, there's an app called Display Made that keeps all of your windows tidy when you unplug. And it was $10. And it's the best thing ever. And then I watched a video on YouTube, how to set it up, how to implement it. And so I probably spent an hour on figuring that out. But that hour that I, I stopped and I educated and I researched, that hour saved me seven hours for the next week because I would do it every day. Yeah. So that's just an example of when you feel like you're in a hamster wheel running in a race and going round and round, just stop doing what you're doing because you're not going to get a different result. You have to make change. And there's so many free resources out there. And usually there's always a video on YouTube, a self-help video of how to do something Um, also I encourage people to reach out to their peers and their coworkers. Um, some of the places like today I'm in Virginia and I'm teaching a class tonight and some of the people I've talked to, they tell me they're so excited that I'm going to share with them some of my business practices because their coworkers in the city that they're in, they're not as open to share, which I understand that. I mean, not everybody's like that where I'm from, but there are a few core people in a community and professional networking organizations that are willing to share. And you just, you don't be afraid to ask for help. And hey, if somebody tells you no, no problem, move on to the next person. Because there's always, there's great mentors out there. And with the resources of online and YouTube, there should be a light at the end of the tunnel. So don't ever get discouraged. I like that. There is definitely... A light at the end of a tunnel. There's yeah. there's tools and systems to help you with everything. And sometimes, like you said, it's just a matter of asking, hey, how do you handle this with your clients? What's your process? Mm-hmm. You might get a great answer. 
yeah, you never know. There's a lot of um, really, really good organizations. And there's a lot of great, uh, well, I don't read magazines, but there's some online magazines that I love, like the Success Magazine, the Entrepreneur Magazine. And there's real stories in there from real people who were just, were homeless at one point because they put everything into their business and they couldn't figure it out. But then they started to surround themselves with the right people and now they're doing very well. And to read those stories and be inspired by other people to know, hey, I'm not the only one feeling lost and I'm not the only one that doesn't have it figured it have everything figured out. I still don't have everything figured out. But the only way we can move forward is to be positive and to look for a different way to do it better. I love that. Thank you so much, Angela. And where can people go to find out more about what you're working on? Yeah, you can visit my website. It's Angela Profit. It's P-R-O-F-F, two F's as in Frank, and two T's as in Tom, dot com. And there's a lot of great information on the website and a lot of great resources, not only for brides, but also for vendors and other small businesses and entrepreneurs that are looking to go paperless. We've got, I have a book that just came out about our top apps and I have a video series that walks people through various steps and how to become paperless and how to be more productive. Awesome. Well, I will make sure that I link up to all that in the show notes. Thank you so much, Angela. You're welcome. Have a great day. Thanks for having me. I hope that you got something out of that. And like I said in the intro, lots and lots of tools in this one. So be sure to head over to the show notes at evolveyourweddingbusiness.com slash 48 to get all the links to everything we discussed today. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to listen to this podcast, and I'll speak to you soon.